right, one dirty job done. You guys didn't get to see it. No worry, it was dirty. Pull the modules out. That's all these things right here. Put in the large wire, took out the small wire. For garbanzo beans, we don't need small wire, so we got large wire in there. Rotor set to lower speed, blew the combines off really well, cleaned them up. I think we're ready for some garbanzo beans. Let's go give it a shot, let's see if it's ready. We don't know yet, they just went out there. I'm gonna take this out there, and if they're if uh, they're ready to go, I guess we'll start harvesting garbanzo beans. Oh, and by the way, so happy about this. No more crop lifters. Don't need those in the garbs. Ah, oh, so nice. But the garbs are short. In fact, I think they're, they feel like they're shorter than normal, probably because it was such a dry year and hard on them. So we're gonna have to be dragging headers on the ground, but we rolled it. These are not flex heads. We're gonna make them be flex heads, so let's get to it. Well, uh, it's going. It's really clean in the tank. Not many pods in there, not many shells, so that's doing a good job. My tailings showed a little bit of loss, and my sieve loss is fairly high. Went out back, there's some pods getting kicked out that aren't being threshed. There's also a lot of pods on the ground from the previous windstorm that came through about a week ago. That's kind of sad to see, but we're running 15 to 20 bushels an acre and our garbs, not real impressive. Hopefully it picks up, gets more than that, because uh, yeah, if it doesn't do much better and that the hassle of doing this isn't worth it, so we'll see. Consider our yellow peas ran 35 across the board, which is as good as our wheat, so. But we'll see, we'll see how it works out. Another nasty issue with chickpeas is weed control is difficult. There are all these weeds out here. This is actually pretty clean right here. There's some areas that are not going to be fun, and uh, all we're doing is growing more weeds on our farm. So, I don't know. I don't know. This better be a good money maker, because if it's not, I don't know if we have a future in this. Oh, this is not fun. Oh, these weeds are going to be a pain. I think we're going to have to spray some of this stuff. That's about the only way we're going to be able to get through this without plugging combines up and making a mess. Uh, I slugged it pretty good. So, I'm running on the D-slug. Thankful for that. I just got to just freed up once and then I engaged the header and a big log went in and again and well, it's jammed up again. So I'm rocking the rotor back and forth with my fingers here. 50 RPM at a time left and right. It's gaining work speed every time. Eventually here, it'll kick it all out and I'll keep going. But I mean, just look at this mess. I think I'm about to cut around some of this. We're gonna have to spray it out. I think that's the only way. That D slug, I'm telling you, if you're operating a combine that runs a belt to drive the rotor, I'm sorry. This thing, CVT transmission, running the rotor, D-slug, didn't get out of the cab. About two minutes, I had it going again. And that was plugged pretty bad. Okay, um, we just started our chickpeas. Uh, got the combines, the mods, modules, uh, which are uh, sectional concaves. Uh, got them changed out to handle the, the size of the seed of this uh, garb gabonzo beans or chickpeas and so they're relatively dry but uh, fairly weedy in places so we're chewing through them trying and I'm trying to get uh, the right uh, settings for the platform uh, we are cutting right on the ground we're using the pressure of the uh, platform just to put a little little bit of pressure to ride along the surface and then uh, uh, try to get the reel set. I got the guards tipped up uh, so that they won't just fall off because uh, once the reel spikes hit them uh, they can shatter. So we're uh, trying to get it all adjusted. I think we got the combine fairly well adjusted. I see some hauls in the back but they don't really concern themselves too much with with hauls they'll clean that out. They just want to make sure you save enough peas. We'll kind of keep adjusting as we're going. This is kind of a, a new experience for me. We got about uh, 1,100 acres of uh, these to go through. Going about four miles an hour. Uh, got a weather event coming in tomorrow night. Might stop us for a day or so and then uh, we can get right back at them again. And, Hopefully by the end of the week, we shall be done with 2020 harvest. I'm gonna see if I can get uh, the rabbit to uh, jump out in front of Kobe. Kobe's outside. He, he missed that, even though I was trying to guide him over to the rabbit on those weeds. Missed it. 
I'm not telling him. Well, it's not yielding very good. We're averaging 14 bushels an acre. Yeah, I don't know. They're short. The pods are rolling out of the header. I've tried adjusting the header about 10 different ways. Tilting it back, tilting it forward. Reel in, reel out, reel fast, reel slow. Speed up, slow down. It just doesn't, uh, those pods are rolling off the header. There's not enough plant material to keep shoving the plants in because it's not yielding high enough. And the plant's so short, it's like cutting lentils. I don't know, I don't know. Should've just planted peas, yellow peas, not chickpeas. Hopefully this isn't the sign of what the rest of the acres are gonna be though. We'll know more as we get going, but for now, uh, this isn't a good start, I'll tell you right now. But we're almost done with this field. We've got all those weeds. We've got some tansy mustard in here. We got some wild oats in here. We got some stuff. I have no idea what that's even called. Kochia, Russian thistle. We're just making a cesspool for weeds to grow. Oh, I couldn't even imagine being an organic farmer. We even used some herbicide on this. Organic farming would be not so much fun. But on the bright side, my yields are up 20 bushels in this area. That's better. Still not great, but that's better. Well, first day of chickpeas is down. We're gonna get a whole day in today, and then the weather's moving in tomorrow night, or wait, no, tonight. And uh, we'll probably get shut down for a couple days. I saw something dragging on my header. That's important. I think I remember looking at this earlier, and I thought, oh, that's kind of stretching, and it's uh, just a matter of time before it pulls through. But if you look at that, see how it pulled through like that? It probably looked the same on both ends. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna fabricate quickly this piece and then we'll stretch the spring, reattach it, and get back in business. So I get some tension on this. Though we are practically just running our headers on the ground. I mean, we're, we're just dragging headers at this point to get those chickpeas in, but I want to get this fixed. So let's, uh, let's do it. So first thing, let's take a look at our little scrap pile here and see if I can find a piece that looks remotely similar. I don't know if this is a hardened steel or not. It probably is, but, or at least a little higher grade. That, that'd be nice and thick right there, that piece. That's a big one. Let's see if we can find some. Ooh, right there. Perfect. Yeah, same thickness. We're good. Let's make one of these. Chickpeas are cutting really, really, really slow, which means the trucks aren't really moving very fast, which means the grain cart is really just sitting really, really, really slow in one spot. That's a lot of really, but anyways, that's really what's happening. We figured since we might be sitting around a little bit, there's things to do. And one of the things on the bucket list to do is move a couple rock piles that are in the middle of a field and they're right over here and we can do some of that while we're waiting for the grain cart to fill up so we can get the semi to fill a bin. And so that means we're gonna need the, well, the international dump truck and big front end loader. So let's go play Tonka. What do you say, Chadster? <laughs> All right, let's go play with some buckets. <laughs> buckets. You know, that's his name, guys. We should call him no, Buckets. No, we're not calling me Buckets. <laughs> <laughs> Plugged up again. Ah, oh, these weeds are bad. I'm doing the D slug right now, so I'm rocking my rotor back and forth. You can see it's going in like uh, 50 RPM increments. So as soon as it hits zero, then I reverse it and go forward. Oh, I just felt the grind a little bit. There we go, oh, almost there. So I got this little rocker switch. I'm at full high idle, and nope, oh, there it goes. Nope, not quite. Once it maintains a steady 60 to 80 RPM, 
in forward, then I'll engage it and then kick all the junk out. So it's just rocking and it's just basically spinning that kosha back and forth inside the rotor. And uh, eventually here, it's gonna push it out the back. Oh, there we go, see? 60, oh, there we go. Come on, grind, 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 grind. It's grinding, it's grinding, I can feel it shaking. Okay, so let's kick her off, throttle back. I run four, RPM, rotor RPM zero. I'm gonna go ahead and engage it and throttle up real quickly. Come on, buddy, come on. Ah, oh, I didn't make it. We'll get that chunk out of there. Come on, slug. They call them slugs, not chunks, slugs. There we go, okay, it was almost there. Let's throttle back, kick separator off, kick separator on, throttle up. Come on up to 500, 420, 489, and 490, there we go. Okay, 500. There we go, D-slug's out. Now the next step is I got a bunch of junk in this header, and I gotta engage my header, and it's gonna throw all that in there. And I could go out there by hand and clean it all out, or I could just hope that it feeds it. So let's crank this rotor up. Do six, 700 RPM, 700. And let's just throw this header on, here we go. Grind, grind, grind. Oh, it's through. See, it did it, perfect. So now I'll slow my rotor down to that 500 RPM is what I want, these chickpeas. Gotta close my concaves down, so I open them way up to make some room. And then I can start cutting again. So I'm crossing an alkali bottom here. This is where uh, water drainage happens. And this can be really mushy. Fortunately, it's super dry right now, so I didn't sink in it, but coming spring or after a big rain, yeah, you don't cross that. It'll sink down to the axles. All right, back to the peas. My sickle bar on my left side just quit working. I see a rock, I backed up, put about, I don't know, 15 yards before I realized it wasn't cutting. I think it smacked a rock. We're literally dragging the ground to get this stuff. The question is, what did it do? Here's the rock it hit. It wasn't the ground, so something must be bound right here. That or, oh yeah, right there. Okay, let's go get the tools. Actually, that's the first time I've had one of those break in a while. It's amazing how long they've held on. We did finally get into some better chickpeas. This stuff, it's a little greener. Uh, the stems are still green, surprisingly, but the pods, they're pretty ready and they they're, they're seem to be shelling well. So we're having a little better luck keeping in our headers. There is definitely some on the ground. Um, I don't know why I put that in my mouth. These are rock hard, I'm gonna break a tooth. But that's good, it's running about 20 bushels an acre here, so I mean, I'd be okay with that. If it could do 20 across the board with this year's conditions, but earlier we were running around 10, it was just like, oh, this is depressing. Is this gonna pay for the fuel to run this combine? I don't know. All right, let's fix this section. That's how it's done. Oh, okay, back to my nice seat, air conditioning. I just sat down, just started going, and then all of a sudden, clunk, 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 bang, grind, grind, grind. I don't know, rock went through, question is where. Rotor's spinning freely, but I engage it, and there's some nasty sounds happening. Well, I gotta investigate and find out what's going on. I think I'm gonna need another hand. Someone up here to engage, another person to be outside listening to what is making the sound. So I'm gonna go drive over to Chad and uh, have him listen as I engage the separator. See if he can determine what part of the combine is grinding. There's definitely uh, definitely a slip clutch or something that's given out, so something's jammed. It sounds like something to do with the elevator, the grain elevator, which I don't know, we'll see. I'm, I'm a little nervous about that. Well, we determined the straw chopper got jammed up. A rock went through the rotor and bound up in the straw chopper and ripped this off. When I say ripped, it didn't actually rip. It looks like the bolts either broke or the bracket, but we tried to spin the chopper and couldn't seem to find the location where that's at. I'm gonna keep harvesting though. I think we'll be okay. It might be a little out of vibration, but I think we'll, we'll be fine. So we'll see how well it goes. Deal with it after we finish the last 600 acres that we have. I can feel a vibration in the combine that wasn't there before. So that's two things, either the rotor got damaged when the rock went through, which I have no idea where the rock went, or that straw chopper's out of balance, which would make the most sense because it's missing one of the teeth on it or blades, chopper blades. So I don't know, I'd like to just run the day and then deal with it after the rain that's coming tonight, because we'll have time. 
I don't know how much damage can be done with it being off that much balance for that little bit of time. I think it'll be okay. I think it's just a vibration, but I'll talk to the guys and see what they think, see if they think it's something that we need to stop and fix. After the vibration, I'm gonna put this back in there. So I gotta get up there, gotta turn that, find out what it is, put the bolts in, tighten it up, and it should be good to go. Definitely made a difference. I'm glad we did that. It's running a lot smoother now. That's hard on bearings, just like wheel bearings, you know when your tire's out of balance and you drive for a long time. That vibration, any type of vibration is something being pressed against something repeatedly. And that means bearings, ball bearings, pins and bearings, take the abuse of that. So I'm ready to be done with harvest. I don't know what happened here, but this is the cleanest field so far. Man, there's hardly a weed to be seen. It's awesome. Sprayed the same stuff around the same time. I, I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. Why does this feel so clean than the rest of them? But we're making it happen. These combines are doing a remarkable job of keeping the kosha seeds separated out of the garbanzo beans. I mean, there's very little that ends up in that tank, which is awesome. Plus this stuff's going on air for about two weeks. When I say air, I mean aerations, bins. So our bins have aerated floors and a fan will blow air through the bin for a couple weeks and that'll dry everything down. So that way we don't have to worry about spoilage. But I'm looking in the distance and there is a dark wall moving this way. And that is the storm system that's coming in. It's gonna make temperatures go down to probably freezing tonight and tomorrow. Plus maybe a half inch of rain or some snow. We're trying to get it done before then. Fortunately, all the wheat's off. I don't know how these chickpeas are gonna handle that rain and snow, I, I don't know, but uh, we're just gonna keep going at it until we get stopped and then uh, assess the damage afterwards or just pick up when it all dries out. We'll find out. Heard some squeaking. Usually it's something to do with the feeder or the, the cutter bar on this thing and I'm pretty sure I saw it. I can feel the heat radiating from that. That there is a great way to start a fire. All right, let's take it apart, put a new one on it. Just like new, even has like, well, actually there's no paint on that. I think it's just oil. The rest of this looks okay. Poor thing's taking a beating, but that's just what happens. Look at all these pods. These things are so goofy looking. Okay, let's go back. Storm's coming. See that? That is coming. And so is the grain cart. So I can get out of his way. Look at how clean this is. Look at that. Granted, this isn't the high yielding crop. I mean, what are we doing? 17, 18, so yeah. We droughted out, basically. I mean, it droughted out. Didn't have a chance to grow into the 30, 40, 50 bushel that it should have done. 50 had been amazing, actually, but just look how clean it is, though. Look at this. Like, no green, no weeds. 40 acre piece here, beautiful. Right on the other side where we had CRP ground that we broke out a couple years back and planted, full of kosher. This was sprayed the same time this year. Nothing was done differently. I don't know. Why is it so kosher free on this side? But as soon as I go over this hill, green mat. See what I mean? Kosher's back, amazing. I'd say we're sitting at probably 80 acres left of this field that's cuttable. And the weather is coming in fast. It is dropping and the weather is coming in fast. The temperature is dropping quickly. Uh, it's supposed to freeze tonight. I, I don't know how hard, but we gotta put the sprayer inside, but man, faster. Gotta go faster. That's the end of the chickpeas for today. And I'm surprised there's no water droplets on my window yet. It's coming. But yeah, we'll run them back. We'll maybe blow them off, park them, wait a couple days and then pick this up where we left off. But uh, disappointing, disappointing yields. I don't know. Yeah, I think if these were planted about three weeks earlier, they would have yielded 10 to 15 more bushels an acre. It just was a really harsh July, and these were not a very good late season crop to grow this in this country. So we'll see, who knows? But we have a crop, and the other crops have been good. So you know what? I'm thankful.